Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Sorry in advance for the sliding. I am filming this during my lunch because honestly, I just have to find whatever time I have to film. Um, and so I wanted to go over top 10 things I've learned about Etsy um, and having an Etsy shop during my first year. So if you guys are not super familiar with my Etsy shop, I did create an Etsy shop last December um, selling budget stickers. And I have been just blown away by how much um, there is to learn when it comes to stickers and Etsy and equipment and all of that. And so I figured I would share it with you guys for those of you guys who are just interested but also for people who are considering opening up an Etsy shop um, and all the stuff that goes along with it. So um, again today is just going to be the top 10 lessons that I've learned and again sorry about the lighting I'm filming during lunch so it's kind of weird. Um, so the first thing is to have and I have my notes right here so the first thing is to have a stock of supplies on hand. Um, make sure you always have what you're going to need to make your product and make sure that you have plenty of it. So for me, obviously, that's sticker paper, ink, um, mailers. You never want a situation where you are not sending orders out either um, when you can or on a timely basis because you're missing something. And this has been something that I've struggled with a lot because I don't wanna keep a ton of materials in my office. I don't want to have a ton of boxes and extra stuff, you know, just hanging around. But sometimes there's delays and sometimes you order something from Amazon or wherever else and it takes a while to get to you or for some reason the package gets lost or um, there's a delay and it doesn't get to you in time and so you just don't want your customers to be affected because of that. So um, this has happened to me multiple times and the biggest piece of advice that I have and that I try and live by is to just have extra, um, extra of everything because even though it's a pain to have a bunch of boxes laying around um, and trying to figure out how to store it all, it's way better to have extra rather than be waiting on sticker paper to come when you need to start cutting stuff for the next month. Um, so that's the first thing. Just make sure that you have plenty of supplies. And again, this is hard because when you first start out, you really don't know what you're going to need. But over time, you kind of realize, okay, this is how many orders I have. So this is how many mailers I'm going to need this month. And you kind of adjust as you go. Again, in the beginning, it's kind of hard. But I'm saying over the year, this is kind of what I've learned. The other thing that I have learned is to have a backup of supplies. So not only do you have your supplies that you're going to need, but also have a backup of supplies, like stuff that you do not touch unless you absolutely have to. For a long time, I had mailers in my um, closet in my office that I never touched. It was just there in case I ordered mailers and they didn't come in time and I had to use something. And believe it or not, I think it was in November, I ordered mailers. They took I ordered them like two weeks in advance, still weren't there when I was placing, um, like getting orders out and I needed to dip into those. So again, regardless of what you think you know, it's always good to have a backup of supplies. So I keep that completely separate from my normal supplies. That way I don't rely on those and it's just like, okay, worst case scenario, I can go there. And then obviously if you use that, you need to replenish that. So. Those are my two things that I have really, really learned. It is so hard. It is so hard to um, balance like, you know, spending a ton of money on stuff that you're not going to need right away and being comfortable that if anything ever happens that you are, you know, your shop would be okay. Uh, third thing that I've learned is if you can do this, this is the, the best thing. My shop has changed dramatically. My stress level has changed dramatically with doing this. If you can cut and prepare items before listing them or letting them be available for sale. So creating an inventory. And this is hard as well. Like all of these things are gonna be hard because you just don't know what people are going to want. You don't know how much you're going to need. Things change, people try different shops. You just don't know. Um, and so I, in the beginning, so probably the first six months of my shop, 
I would try and get stuff ready for sales. Um, obviously I would design kits, cut kits, but I would never do like a ton of cutting ahead of time. I would just cut like, you know, a reasonable amount that I thought reasonable and then I would release them. And then as orders would come in, I would go through that small inventory and then I would be pretty much just cutting and printing and stuff on demand. So as orders came in, I was filling those orders. The problem with doing that is that if you run into any problem, any printer problem, any cutter problem, you could potentially be um, in a situation where you can't get orders out because you can't make your product. And so I did not like that method. It stressed me out. <laughs> um, and I think the biggest thing is like as orders came in, I realized like, okay, orders are good. Getting a lot of orders, that's great. But it also means a ton more work for you. So as orders were coming in, I was getting stressed. Like, oh, this is gonna be a lot of work, a lot of cutting, a lot of printing. And I was always really stressed that I was going to have a problem and that it would make me like really slow with getting orders out and all of that. So then I was able to get a friend to help me for a while and we got ahead. We were able to get a ton of inventory cut for like one month. I think it was August when I started this. And then we like, I didn't release August until everything was cut. And of course you run into situations where you cut too much or you don't cut enough, which means you have to restock and that's completely fine. But doing that made my orders go out faster. It also helped with my stress level because instead of being like, oh, more work as orders came in, I was like, okay, like this is, I cut everything, it's all good to go. Like all I have to do is pack orders, which is nothing in comparison to having to like print and cut and all of that. Um, so it changed it changed my shop. It made it so much easier. And don't get me wrong, there's times where I overestimate, so I cut way more than what I need. There's going to be times where I don't cut enough and I have to do restocks. And that, again, is completely okay because it's not like I'm filling, I'm not cutting as I'm filling. I am filling, then putting it up in the shop, and then people are buying it. So if I run into issues with my printer, my cutters, it doesn't matter because it's not up. It's not avail available for sale. So it helps with the stress level. That is one thing that I have seriously, I think it's changed my shop and has made it so much easier on me. Fourth thing that I've learned is instant ink is key. <laughs> so when I first started my shop, I looked into printers and I tried to find the best printer. And I don't know if my printer is the best printer, but it has worked pretty well. I've gone through like four of them now, or I have four of them now. Um, but the thing is, ink is super expensive, and I was using the extra large ink cartridges, and I was going through some of them like multiple ones per day, depending on how much I was printing. It was a lot of money, and those things are like fifty, like forty-five ninety-nine each for one color. $45.95 or $45.99 for black. So it was a lot of money in ink. And I remember when I, when I bought my printer, the guy at Best Buy was like, oh, you should look into in instant ink, blah, blah, blah. And I tried it and for some reason it just wouldn't work with my printer. It would not hook up. I couldn't figure it out. So I'm like, you know what? I don't have time for this. I need to figure out if I'm going to even open up a shop. And so I just, you know, started buying ink and I've, I did that until, you know, not very long ago. But the thing is, ink is expensive. And like I said, depending on what you're printing, you could go through a ton of them at one time. I remember there was one point either in July or August, one of those months where I spent $600 on ink. $600, that's so much money. And so I started looking at my finances with my shop and just seeing like where I could cut back because I wanted to start offering, offering discounts, but I was also spending a ton of money on supplies. And I'm like, what is happening here? Like, what can I do to make this better? So a lot of people su suggested instant ink and I was really skeptical, skeptical, but I'm like, you know what? I'm going to just try it out. Worst case scenario, I try it out. I have a couple months free. If it doesn't work out, I go back to buying ink, whatever. And it has been huge. The ink cartridges last for a very long time 
you can print a ton with one ink cartridge and with the business plan they send you backup so I currently have three printers on instant ink one of mine is not because it's an older printer that I just use for packing slips and honestly it doesn't cost very much money um, to once in a while pay for those um, but anyway I have three on there and I have a stockpile of ink like plenty like I and probably stocked for like two months worth and that's just what they send you like they as soon as it seems to be a little low they send you extra they send you a couple extra just in case like you know they're running a little bit slow it does take some time for the the ink cartridges to get to you but you'll never run out of ink before it gets to you like I like I said I probably have like five of both ink um, of the color and the black right now and I really have to change those so it has been huge so six hundred dollars versus like twenty dollars per printer a month it is insane in, insane there are times where i go over so you get with my printer the max amount of um prints you can get is 700 pages per month i go over that and um it's a dollar per 20 pages so in, re in reality, even if you go over, you're still going to be saving money because it's nowhere close to hundreds of dollars that I was paying before. So if you do not have instant ink, if you have an HP printer and you can do it, I definitely recommend it. It's huge. Um, the fifth thing that I've learned is to find the bottleneck in your business. And so a bottleneck for those of you guys who may not be familiar with business terms is basically something that is holding your, your business back from doing more. So find that thing that's holding you up and try to either eliminate it or reduce it as much as possible. So bottlenecks can change. That's one thing that I've learned um, in business classes and with owning a business is that at one point my cutters were my my silhouette cameos were my bottleneck having one having two it was really holding me up and I wasn't able to cut very much but then as I grew and as I acquired more of my cutters I realized okay now my printer is holding me up because I can cut a ton of stuff but, I, but my printer is not printing fast enough and it has to print slower because I want the quality there so as time goes on you'll find those bottlenecks and whatever you can do to reduce it try to do that if you can eliminate it altogether, that would be great but usually it's just you know reducing it a little bit so now I have a couple printers as I mentioned so that definitely helps I can have two or three going at one time um, it also helps for like when there's technical difficulties I could always be like you know what screw that printer I'm gonna use this one um, it has made a huge difference so if you can find whatever's holding your company back or your business definitely do that Number six is to invest in time saving items. Um, it's totally worth it, totally worth it. And this is especially true if this is like your side business and you don't have a ton of time to spend dealing with like small issues. Um, so for example, before I started my Etsy shop, I did a lot of research about Etsy shops and really I didn't think that I was going to like this was gonna be a thing. Like I thought maybe a couple people would buy my stickers, but I did not realize it was gonna blow up the way it has, and I'm super grateful for that. Um, but one of the things that I saw a lot of people doing who had Etsy shops where they would print shipping labels on their sticker paper and then they would go and like physically cut it out and put it on their mailers. And I saw some other people, some people who had bigger shops using like the Dymo label printers. And I'm like, you know what? Those things are amazing. That looks like that's going to save a lot of time and a lot of time and money because in comparison, like I know the Dymo machine is expensive, but you're not using your sticker paper. You're not using your ink. And so I kind of did some research. And when you're first starting out, you have to buy like, you know, your printer, you have to buy your, um, your cameo you have to buy all of these things and I think the Dymo the Dymo label printer was like over $200 and I was just like you know what I don't know if I want to spend that kind of money I don't know what this is gonna be like I don't want to spend a ton of money if it's not even gonna be something that people want blah 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 and I talked to a couple people and everybody was like you know what just do it like worst case scenario spend $200 on something 
and you've already spent whatever amount of money if it saves some time if it makes your life easy then do it so I went with it and I have to tell you that Dymo label printer has been the best investment I've ever made because it makes things so much easier I can't imagine printing out labels on like sticker paper and cutting them out like it is so seamless right now with the way that I like fill orders it was the best $200 or whatever I spent I honestly don't even remember and I'll have everything that I use down below if you guys want to check them all out but whatever you can do to save a little bit of time I definitely recommend doing that and so for me I work full-time I do Etsy I do YouTube I do all of that on the side and so that saving me time like not having to cut shipping labels out or even print them on my printer has made a huge difference so I definitely 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 recommend you can find something that makes your life easier if it's like an automatic stapler if it's a label printer whatever it is if you can find something that will cut some time for you do it um, okay so this goes along with stocking items prior to having them available for sale this is number seven which is to put together a schedule of when you're gonna get work done so for me I recently did this I have not done this in the past and I'm telling you again it makes me feel so much better about what I'm doing and like it doesn't stress me out as much having a schedule so I basically just take a monthly calendar a monthly view calendar and I literally say what I need to cut every day so for example um, if I need to do seven by nine budgets I'm like okay for March what I need to do is I need I need I have like 28 days let's say um, I'm going to cut every day and again you can choose this like if you know Mondays are hectic for you and you don't want to cut Mondays don't include Mondays in your little calculation but I pretty much take everything that I need to cut I kind of figure out what takes longer what takes less time and I plan out okay Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday I'll cut budget stickers on um, Thursday I'm gonna cut transaction logs blah 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 and I just go through and literally say what I'm gonna cut every single day and of course I let it be flexible I put extra days in just in case something happens just in case my schedule gets crazy if Macy gets sick work is crazy whatever um, but for the most part I try and stick to that schedule and doing that makes new releases and makes having an inventory of items ahead of releasing them so much easier um i don't feel stressed like oh my goodness i have so much stuff to do i'm like okay this is what i need to get done today and once that's done like i need to check out i need to give myself some relaxing time i need to spend time with my family and i'm telling you it makes a huge difference again that really just goes along with stocking items before you're selling them number eight and this is hard for me because I don't like to say no I'm just a person that tries to accommodate everybody and so it's really hard for me to say no but you have to learn to say no um, I get requests all the time all the time to do custom stickers to oh can you do a Monday start instead of a Sunday start can you add this can you do this and I have to say no I just don't have enough time and that's something that goes along with having a side business instead of like this is my full-time job is that I just don't have the capacity to do certain things and so I get a lot of people asking me to do like custom scripts or to change things up for them and I honestly just can't I can't do more than what I can do so the biggest thing that I've learned is just learn to say no if you if I know I can't do something just say no um, and that might make people mad that I can't do whatever they're asking but I feel like it's a better thing to say no rather than to like leave there be a possibility and for people to be waiting on you to do something that you just can't physically do so that is one thing I know it's hard for some people especially for me I don't like saying no but I just I had to learn to say no um, number nine is announce release dates and so ahead of time you know talk about release dates when you plan to release things and mention it in as many places as you, as you possibly can you would not believe how many requests or how many people message me on Etsy and they're like oh when is when is January 
kits being released? When are February kits being released? And I'm like, they're released. <laughs> like they're already released or, oh, you know, they're next week or whatever. I mention them in a lot of my videos and I, I'll also post on Instagram. But somehow like, you know, with all the craziness of social social media and videos and everything, somehow it still gets missed. So I try as much as possible and as soon as possible to let people know when things are going to be released, um, what expectations I have of like sales and um, you know, if I'm going to be on vacation, I try and let people know ahead of time because I just don't want people to be held up because of whatever I'm doing. Um, that has made a huge difference for my shop and it's helped out I think a lot with people placing orders because I know what to expect. Um, let's see. And then number 10, um, and this is also something that I just recently started doing. I haven't done forever. Um, and that is holding sales and discounts. And I know as a, you know, as a business person, it totally makes logical sense. Um, but even like a 10% discount or 20% discount can really bring in a lot more people to purchase from your shop, but also for them to try new, um, stickers or whatever new products. So I've been trying now that I've figured out instant ink and everything, I've been trying to hold more sales because again, I want to thank you guys for shopping with me, but also because now I can do that because I'm spending less money on ink. So I try and pass those savings along with you guys. Um, with sales and discounts though, I have to say one, it really helps get in sale, like get in orders when you want them to come in. So I know at work when it's going to be crazy. I know when we're going to have family things. And so if I can schedule sales or schedule orders to come in when I can actually fill them, it's better because then it's not so stressful. I can get them done and then spend time with my family or, and then go on vacation or, and then have a crazy day at work. Um, so doing that, like hosting sales, giving discounts, everything like that, it helps to, you know, schedule your orders coming in at a certain time um there's something else I was gonna say pregnancy brain guys I'm totally losing my train of thought it helps bring it in I don't know what I was trying to say now <laughs> but that's that's the biggest thing is it just it promotes you know orders to come in when you have time to do them and again, as a side business, it makes it huge for me because I'm busy. I'm so, so busy. And I just, I need to make sure that I can get what I can get done when I can get done and not have it super stressful at work or super stressful with family stuff and then also have orders like that I need to get out. So those were the top 10 things that I um, learned during this year of having an Etsy shop. There are so many other things, obviously, that I learned. Tax consequences for things, um, customer relations, all of that. There's so many other things, but those are the top things that I've learned and that I've really tried to just keep in mind as I'm continuing to have my shop. Um, so hopefully you guys found those things helpful. If you guys have any questions related to Etsy um, and having a shop, an Etsy shop, let me know down below. I will try and answer as many as possible. I have a lot of other Etsy related videos, so if you want to check those out, I have office tours. I have like a list of my top equipment that I recommend, stuff like, sorry, pregnancy, I'm telling you guys, it's just never ending. I'm either like sweating or burping or whatever else. Um, but anyway, if you guys wanna check out those, definitely check them out. I have a whole playlist related to Etsy, um, but I just really wanted to share those things with you guys because it has made a huge difference with my Etsy shop. And I think um, some of those things, depending on what you do and what your Etsy shop is about, could really help. Um, help you with just timing, help you with stress levels, help you with all of that. So thank you guys so much for watching. As of right now, my shop is on vacation. We are waiting for baby girl. I will definitely post a video when she is here, letting you guys know that she's here and talking about her name and all of that. Um, but as of right now, my shop is on vacation until she comes. So 
um, if you want to check it out, definitely check it out sometime early January. So thank you guys so much again for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.